Hello everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nub Raids. Today's video is actually a very much a requested video, uh, especially from newer players who are wondering how far they need to be in the game to complete these fragment or fusion events. These are events that happen uh, every four weeks on average and nearly always going to give you a legendary champion out of it if you complete the steps in game. Right, the usual schedule is they tell us about it a week in advance, then there's two weeks of events, and then there's a week off, right? And then it just goes through that cycle every time. It's pretty much extremely consistent. The only thing I think that is more consistent is uh, people complaining about it, saying that it's definitely happening faster than it was before. Uh, <laughs> you nearly always not is nearly always that four week cycle, uh, which means there's 13 of these events every year, right? Because it's not quite one a month. Every four weeks, slightly shorter than a month. There's going to be 13 of these a year. Usually one of them is just an epic, though. So usually 12 legendaries and one epic. Um, also worth noting, there's fragment types and there's fusion types. If we jump into uh, the summon portal. So a fusion is going to be... Well, these are just... Um, yeah, these aren't a great example because these are just epic fusions. But for a fusion, this is generally considered to be the hardest type of this event. You'll have to uh, collect four sets of four rares. Uh, usually these are going to drop from the events themselves. You'll have to fuse up four uh, epics, and you'll have to get those epics to level 50, 5 star, fully ascended, and then fuse them up into that legendary champion. This is going to have a hard time limit. You have to complete it within the time limit. If you don't, it's just going to disappear, and you're going to be screwed. It's also fairly expensive, obviously, to get your your five uh, level fi uh, your four epics up to 50, 5 star, fully ascended. That's a big investment of time. Uh, ascension pots, all the rest. It costs, I think, a million silver to fuse the legendary then at the end. So that's the hardest one. The other version are these fragment type summons, right? Like this, where you collect 100 fragments of the legendary. Uh, and once you have those fragments collected, you can summon them at any time. We're going to talk about how to exploit that to our benefit and, you know, why I've got, for example, three right here completely saved up. Um, so yeah, um, the downside of this type is that if you don't complete it, these fragments are useless, right? You either have the 100 and you summon the champion, or you have anything less than 100 and you don't summon the champion. One of the advantages of the fusion types is that, hey, if you're very early in the game and you're not able to finish the legendary, you will still often be able to get at least one or two of the epic champions. And those can actually be very helpful. Sometimes the epics are extremely good. They can help you with your account. So without any further ado, though, let us dive in. Let me show you an example here. We jump over to Photoshop. So these are the, um, the last two events that we've had in the game. What I do every single time uh, one of these comes out, I will um, do a video breaking it down and explaining like where to target your stuff, how to maximize your resources, all that sort of stuff for free to play low spend players. Uh, this was the one before it, Nari the Lucky. I'm going to be doing uh, an actual breakdown, of course, of the current, the, the upcoming fusion uh, or fragment event, Bivald of the Thorn. He should be starting tomorrow as of recording this video. So I will, of course, be doing a breakdown, free to play low spend for that, and presumably for all others uh, every four weeks going forward into the future. So let's take a look. You can sort of compare these two, pause the video, compare it if you want. Um, there's usually a fairly similar structure here. So let's break down what you need to do. So the easiest thing first, I think definitely straightforward. We're going to have, uh, there's usually arena takedown events. There could be two to three of these. Sometimes there might only be one. Basically, this is go in and win matches in the arena. What do you need to do this? Well, it's actually very simple, very straightforward. Um, if you are in gold in classic arena, you should be able to easily complete these by just using your daily tokens. You get a, a new arena token, of course, every hour. Uh, you get some free ones from doing your quests and your advanced quests every day, your playtime rewards. The free tokens you get should be more than enough, more than enough to complete this. If you are in silver in Classic Arena, um, you might have enough. If you use all of your guaranteed free tokens, you might have enough. You may need to spend, though, some gems to ensure that you get it. The easiest way to do this, guys, is you can just break it down. If there's going to be, if this event's going to be up for three days, right, budget it out to get to the, the, the amount that you need for the either the champions or the fragments. Say, okay, it's on for three days. I need to get, let's say, three, uh, 100 points every day because I need 300 points at the end. So you know if you've not reached 100 points on the first day that you need to get extra and you will need to do that every day, right? So just budget it out. 
If you are in bronze in Classic Arena, you probably won't be able to do this. You'll need to be in silver at least, and preferably in gold. So that's Classic Arena. That is very, very straightforward. Next up, we have, um, le next up, let's talk about the Artifact Enhancement. Again, this one is relatively straightforward, but there are a few big tricks to it, right? So this is upgrading artifacts. So what I like to do, and how much silver do you need to save up for this? Well, funny enough, you're going to generate quite a bit of silver, right, from doing the, the dungeon tournaments and the champion training tournaments. You're going to be generating a lot of silver over these couple of weeks anyway, right? You're going to generate quite a lot. So that will often pay for most of this. But the trick that I like to do, I call it the level 15 trick. If I go to someone I'm currently working on right now, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So right now I'm working on Nogdar the Headhunter. Look at his gear. Okay, I've got a couple of pieces I'd already rolled up to 16 from before, but half of these pieces are sitting at level 15. What's going on here? What is happening? Basically, the way that it works is that during artifact enhancement, you only get points, right, when you roll something up to level 4, level 8, level 12, or level 16. In other words, these are the levels which will give you a substat roll or give you a new substat on lower quality gear. You don't get, so for example, I don't get any points from going from 12 to 13, 13 to 14, 14 to 15. I only get points when I go from 15 up to 16, 11 up to 12, and so on and so forth. So what I do is I will just simply stockpile a whole bunch of gear at level 15. And then what I also like to do is, whoops, I X out of that. Uh, I also like to uh, mark my champions with like a heart, right? So if there's champions that have some gear that needs to be rolled up, I'll mark them with the heart. Right, so for example, over here, my Euros, he's got a couple of pieces at 15. Uh, I think Drekstar, Drekstar's got a few pieces here that obviously need more rolling up as well. Um, so yeah, leaving stuff at 15, then you just roll up to 16, you get a big chunk of points. That can be very, very effective, right? And it gives you the benefit, you get a few more stats, right, out of rolling stuff up to 15 than you would before. Uh, if you're really struggling, you can definitely leave stuff just at level 11. That's also viable too. Leave your gear at level 11. It's still obviously pretty usable. Um, and then you can roll it up to 12 during the event. That can help as well, and it's more consistent. The other thing that you can do during this artifact enhancement event is let's say you've got, you've been farming, and like I just yesterday fused up a bunch of uh, instinct gear. Uh, go in and roll all the stuff up to level 8. That's going to give you a ton of points. Rolling up to 8 is almost guaranteed. So roll stuff up to 8. See if it's any good. If it's not any good, you sell it off. Um, I've got videos in terms of how to do that as well. I've got some like gear cleanse videos and things like that. So go in. Any gear that you've been holding onto that might be good, rolling it up to 8 is a guaranteed way with your silver, right? Because the chances are almost guaranteed getting up to 8. It's after 8 when stuff gets harder. It's not worth many points, but it's an efficient way to do it. So that is how I'll be handling artifact enhancement. And basically, never roll stuff up to 16 outside of these artifact enhancement events. You only ever roll stuff to 16 in these artifact enhancements and as free to play and early game players i would stop as soon as you get the fragments or the champion that you want i would stop and then save your gear at level 15 for the next one there could be three of these events in a single fragment or fusion you want to conserve your resources for each one so that would be my advice with that you don't necessarily need to stockpile a ton of silver uh you can invest that silver in getting your gear up to 15 and start progressing in content with gear actually somewhat rolled up. That's my general advice there. Um, okay, the next big thing to talk about is really spending our energy and doing dungeons, right? So dungeons are often going to be a big part of this. So Fire Knight, Spider. Let's talk about this part first. Dragon, Ice Golem. And going alongside these as well, which is almost a part of the same thing, we're going to have Dungeon Divers, right? Dungeon Divers. So this is going to be... Uh, basically, these are the main thing. You can also get Dungeon Diver points, right? From from just farming campaign. Because you get artifacts from campaign. That's You just get Dungeon Diver points for the quality of artifacts that you drop. The main source is going to be in these dungeons. What do you need to do? Well, this is actually reasonably straightforward, right? Reasonably straightforward. So the stages you want to be able to do, the lowest possible stage to complete this efficiently, in my opinion, is actually stage 11, which is really, really doable. Stage 11 is decent in terms of 
uh, your energy to your artifact return. It's also going to be very quick to farm stage 11, probably. So that can be okay. Stage 16, then, is the next one that takes a big jump up in terms of quality. Uh, and then the best stage that you can farm, of course, is going to be stage 20. It's actually more efficient in terms of your energy and your time spent uh, in terms of your tournament and event rewards for let's say in this case dragon the dungeon diver points the dragon tournament points i'm going to get from farming stage 20 is actually better than stage 21 to stage 25 right you get more for your energy spent in 20 it is the most efficient place to go so it's the best place during these fusion or fragment events if you can't do that stage 16 can work and then if you can't do that, stage 11 can work. So for a newer player especially, you might be able to get up to stage 16 of Dragon reasonably early, maybe even stage 20 reasonably early, but you might be stuck in Fire Knight or Spider's Den at much lower stages. For those ones, you might have to do them on stage 11. Uh, and it, yeah, you're going to have to just run it a whole bunch more times, right? It costs less energy. You're going to have to do more runs uh, to spend the same amount of energy. Uh, and all the rest. So that's something that's well worth considering. And another part of this as well, of course, is let's say maybe an ice golem. Do I have a good example? Uh, kind of. So an ice golem, for example, it might take you a really long time. Like when I was first progressing through, it was taking me 10 minutes to clear these stages. So there's no real point in farming. And I, I, remem I remember the first fusion I ever did was the Pixneal fusion. And I remember doing 10 minute runs of stage 20 ice golem. This is a huge mistake. I could have gone back and I could have farmed stage 16 in six minutes. Or I could have farmed stage 11 in, in two minutes, probably even faster than that. I probably could have farmed those faster than that. And for the time I had spent, I would have got a lot more points and gotten it done much more quickly. I was leaving like my phone running overnight with multi battles doing like 10 minute runs of this. Complete disaster. You don't need to do that. 11, 16, 20. They are the stages to do. Um, so just figure it out in terms of the time that you have, the energy you have, which one you can actually grind out. So that's how you do those dungeons. And dungeon diver points is going to come from that as well, right? Basically, you just want to sync up your dungeon farming with the dungeon diver events as much as possible. I talk about those in the specific uh, event videos here because um, it varies from, from uh, type to type. Um, now, the next part of that then, or the next part of this is going to be at your champion training right? Champion training. There's off, whoop, There's often one or two of these, maybe even three of these over the course of one of these events. Uh, champion training is going to be fairly intensive. Now, the good news is this is something that you can certainly prepare for, right? So going in, um, and this would be my advice, you can absolutely save a bunch of champions, right? At, at four star, four star champions at level one, then you can start leveling these up and it becomes very, very efficient. I actually have a whole video as well in terms of min-maxing your points in champion training, min-maxing your brews for champion training. And the best advice I can give here is never, ever, ever spend brews outside of champion training events. Save your brews for champion trainings during these fusion or fragment events. Never spend them outside of it. Save your brews so you can push extra points if you need to when you're out of energy right? That's going to be my best advice. Um, I actually think that you can spend chickens. Spending chickens is totally fine. I, I don't stress about that at all. Chickens actually aren't that good for champion training, believe it or not, because you can't feed brews to chickens to get a whole bunch of points, right? So they're useful, but you can use these easily to rank up your champions outside of the event. Like, don't be stuck not being able to rank up your champions. Use your chickens for that. Um, yeah, I think those are honestly the main parts of advice for what you can do here for this one. Save your brews. Don't be scared to save your chickens. If you know, you're coming up close to a champion training event, you could wait a couple of days to upgrade champions. Um, but like when you're early on in the game, you absolutely don't want to be stuck there, not leveling up your champions uh, when you might need them to actually make progress in the dungeons and stuff. So I'd say that that stuff sort of comes first. Level up your key champions, but then any stuff that's not urgent to level up, you can save them and, and be ready to go with them, uh, basically at that point. Now, I guess the broad question here then, so we come to the two more difficult parts of this, is let's talk about energy in general, your energy, okay? And then we'll talk about shard events. So as part of, of course, these champion training and these dungeon events, you need to spend a lot of energy. These are all energy intensive tournaments. How much energy do you need? Do you need to save up energy? Now, this is where my advice actually differs a lot, perhaps substantially, 
from the advice that you'll see from other uh, other people. Um, I, I know a lot of people will like to just bank bank thousands of energy. They'll overcap it by thousands coming up to these events, right? And they'll just save it up and up and up. Now, I actually do not recommend doing that. I don't recommend doing that. And the reason is very simple. So I, I did, I'm looking at my phone during this because I was typing this stuff up and researching it while I was uh, out uh, uh, playing with the dog. <laughs> I was walking the dog. So basically you get energy points every two, every three minutes, right? So you'll get 20 energy for free every hour when it's under the cap. Um, that's 480 energy a day, or that's 300 and uh, 3,360 energy every week, right? So if you are overcapped on energy and you're not spending it, you're wasting over 3,000 energy a week. That, especially for an early game player, mid game player, that's a huge amount of energy that could be going into stuff that can help you directly in the game. So I do not recommend, if possible overcapping it. I don't recommend it. I think you are much better off going in and actually spending that energy to store up champions at 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 four star level 40 or three star champions. You're better off turning your food champions and preparing for champion training with a whole bunch of champions ready to just power up and go and rank up, right? You're better off saving those up or you're better off spending that energy and saving up silver. You can you can do that. You can save up some silver. That is in my opinion, much, much more important. And especially early game, you're just really slowing yourself down. Like if you're not spending energy for a week and you've been playing the game for three months, that's a big chunk of time where you're not making any progress, any real progress. So I do not recommend doing that. I will say, obviously, if you don't, if you're not able to play much during the day, right, at all, like let's say you only have, whatever, half an hour or an hour a day to play and that's it. Um, then fair enough. But if you're able to like hop on for whatever, half an hour in the morning on your commute, <laughs> and you're able to hop on and throw on some multi battles and stuff in the evening as well. Like if you're able to hop on a couple of times a day, you basically regen your energy every about six hours or so. So if you're able to jump on for a while every six hours and, and blast through it, um, it's very quick to spend it in, in campaign in, in just campaign farming, then that's obviously going to be the most efficient thing that you can do. Um, I will say though, to get through this, I would always recommend having at least 1000 gems saved up for safety. And you're gonna spend these gems on your energy refills. That's gonna give you that safety margin to get through these events. Um, I've never spent over a thousand gems on energy refills for these, uh, for fusions or fragment events. Um, you're gonna get a good chunk of stuff from CBC tournaments, which will happen usually during one of these fusions because every two weeks as well. So you will get resources uh, that will help you through. But yeah, a thousand gems ought to be plenty. If you wanna be super safe, save up 2000 gems. Always have 2000 gems in the bank and it's literally zero stress. You will always just be able to buy energy refills. You will have more than enough energy to get through these events. It's gonna be just fine. Uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't recommend stockpiling it. Like unless you are a very, very casual player that can't afford to be on to actually use your energy and you're gonna just be sitting at 130 half the time anyway. I think it's just not an efficient way to do it. Well, I will say, oh, here's actually a tip. We get a free pack in the shop at, at, um, every day. And those ones will give you energy pots. I don't think I have any right now, but those energy pots last for 99 days. You can hold on to those, right? So save up those, the ones that last for 99 days, save those up for during the tournament and that will save you some stress. There's no harm keeping that in your inbox. Like you got 400 slots. So save that up and that would be what I would do. So that's what I would do there. Now, when we come to, I think the hardest part, we've covered basically everything, but the hardest part here then is obviously going to be, <laughs> yeah, we've been we've been building up to it. It's gonna be these shard events, right? Shard events are gonna be your biggest barrier to entry. Summon Rush and Champion Chase, there's nearly always one of each of these per fusion or fragment. Um, the way Summon Rush works, Summon Rush gives you points simply based off of the type of shard that you open. So it doesn't matter what type of champion you get. I believe it is one point for every mystery shard, uh, I think it's 10 points for every Ancient, then 120 points for every Void, and 250 points uh, for every Sacred Shard. So you can budget this out and figure out how much you're going to need. My recommendation for a Summon Rush event, you want to have at least three Sacred Shards saved up. That would be my minimum. Sometimes you can get away with only opening one. Sometimes you could even get away with not needing to do a Summon Rush at all. 
sometimes you might need as many as five. I think the worst one we ever saw, we needed seven sacred shards, basically, which was insane for a summon rush. I would be saving up at least three, and then you can make up for any missing points if three is somehow not enough. You can make up for that with mystery shards and then void shards if you need to. I would never open ancient shards during a summon rush, pretty much. It's really bad value. Save those for your champion chase events, pretty much. But yeah, I'd open sacreds, then mysteries, then void shards. Uh, and basically, never open, say, like, always save a minimum of three sacreds for summon rush events during fusions. Never go to zero. Never. Just never go to zero. Always save them. You get one for free a month from your advanced quests. You're going to get one, every, uh, sorry, from your monthly quest, you're going to get one a month every 30 days. So that's one that will help you. You're going to need to rustle up another two at least. Obviously, Demon Lord Clan Boss is the best place to get these. Um, you can get some from quests and challenges and things like that as well. But I would, yeah, just save them up. This is their main use for free-to-play, low-spend player. The main purpose for your Sacred Shards is going to be to get you through Summon Rush events during this fusion. Um, there's usually two tiers of rewards as well in the Champion Chase and the Summon Rush. There's usually two stages. Uh, uh, there's going to be one set of either champions or fragments that are easy enough to get. And then there's going to be a set that's going to be very hard to get. For Summon Rush, for free-to-play low spend, you're nearly always going to be going for the easy ones to get. And you're going to be looking to really maximize your champion chase tournament. Champion chase tournament is different. It doesn't matter what shards you're opening. It just gives you points for every champion that you get. And you get more points the more rare the champion is. Um, so, again, I think for like... Uh, for a, a common or uncommon, it's one point. So like the ones you're going to get from like the shop and opening green shards. For rare champions, you can get rare champions from green shards as well. I believe rare champions are like 100, uh, sorry, 10 points. Um, epic champions are 250 and legendaries are 500. Uh, so basically the way it works out for this, this is nearly always going to overlap a two times event. You're going to need to save up your shards. And roughly speaking, how many are you going to need? This can be a fairly open question. Um, for an ancient shard event, I would recommend having at least 50 ancient shards. That would be the minimum I would go in with. It would be 50 ancient shards. For void shards, I'd be trying to go in with a minimum of probably 15. Again, these are bare minimums. And for sacred shards, it's going to be very difficult. If you ever have a fragment event, I think the one upcoming is one such. Bivald of the Thorn is one such, where you're going to have a champion chase with two times, ancient, uh, two times sacreds. That's really bad because you're going to need, be needing sacreds to do the champion chase and sacreds for summon rush. That is pretty nasty. I'd say for a sacred champion chase, I'd be looking for five or more sacreds. So this starts to get really awkward, really difficult, very, very fast. A couple ways around it. You can obviously purchase champions in the market for like one point each. Uh, as you're doing your campaign farming in campaign, um, there's obviously ch uh, chances to drop champions. So you'll get some points for that, especially the rares when they drop, it'll give you a few points. So that can help. The big thing to do to really help with these champion chase events is saving up your fragment summons, right? You can get epic fragment summons from Doom Tower Normal. Uh, and obviously whenever you complete one of these, this is the thing you need to be patient with. So for example, I've completed Nari the Lucky. I've completed Gaius the Gleeful. I haven't summoned either of these. I'm holding on. I'm holding on to them. Gerda Bogbru, she's the current login reward I'm working on. I'm holding on to her. And you can then save these ones up and you can summon them. Like Nari the Lucky, this is 500 points for a champion chase tournament if I need it. So that's guaranteed. So whenever you have one of these fragment legendaries, don't summon them right away. You have to be patient and wait. Wait for the next champion chase tournament. That's part of one of these fragment events. That's the biggest thing. That pushes you 500 points in. That's a huge amount. That's literally, that's pretty much two sacred shards worth of, of champions right there, which is really good, right? That's really, really, really good. That saves you so much stress, so much hassle. It's a pain in the butt though, of course, to do that. But the nice thing is, um, that you can, you know, upgrade their gear, the gear that you're going to put on them, upgrade that gear during the Artifact Enhancement event. Um, if the Champion Chase Tournament, if it overlaps with a Champion Training, I think in this case it didn't overlap meaningfully. In this one, we had Champion Chase, and then we had, uh, then we had um, Champion Training right after. So this is where, like, you could pull them during Champion Chase, then Champion Training, Artifact Enhancement, and you basically, you go and you get them fully geared up and ready to go. And in fact, in this case, we had a Clan v. Clan tournament happening on the Tuesday and Wednesday, probably here as well. So you can book them up during Champion, uh, during the CBC, if you've got any uh, 
bucks for CBC. But this is what I'd recommend, right? There's no point pulling them. There's no point pulling them right here and getting no no benefits for it. And you're not going to be able to level them up and use them anyway. It's better to do it during the next one of these events to really get yourself a whole bunch of easy points for free. So that would be my general advice. I think, like I said, this is going to be the hardest one. It's going to be saving up your shards. It's going to be the hardest thing that you can do. Um, just be patient and never be pulling shards outside of this event. Um, it's, otherwise, you're just going to screw yourself. Let me just double check everything. Yeah, I, I think that's pretty much pretty much bang on where we want to be. Um, and preferably, if you can get over 50 sacreds, if you can get over 20 voids, would be great. If you have five, five, five sacreds, 50 plus, maybe even like 80 ancients if possible, 20 voids, then you're going to feel very safe. But you definitely want to save these up. Check which shard event is going to be happening during your tournament. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. So there we go, guys. That is uh, basically the core info that we have covered here today. Again, right? Level 15 trick for artifacts is absolutely huge. Classic arena, we're looking to be in silver or gold. Dungeons, 11, 16, 20. They are your best stages. Uh, obviously, 20 being the best. Um, dungeon Diver sort of happens alongside doing those. And then the shard events is going to be definitely the trickiest part. Saving up shards, that is tricky. Champion training, you can prepare that one quite a bit in advance. Uh, oh, also another thing, if you're doing a traditional fusion where you obviously need to level up champions, you can actually be leveling up the champions for the fusion during those champion training events and stuff like that. Energy, I don't recommend stockpiling, but I would stockpile a thousand to 2000 gems. Guys, thank you for watching. I hope that was helpful. Let me know any comments, uh, any questions in the comments down below. If you have any suggestions, any helpful tips, especially ones that I forgot to mention here, let us know in the comments below. Help out those new players as well. Uh, but yeah, there you are. I'd say typically you're looking at going about three months, probably at least, of, of playing the game fairly intensively to be able to complete one of these stress-free, I would say. You might need more than that. It's sort of, you know, it, it sort of depends on how much you're playing and how much you, how much of a gamer you are, how much you min-max. Like if you min-max a lot and you really love this sort of thing, you can probably do it three months in. Otherwise, it might take you a while. And don't be scared as well to just do every second one when you start out, you know. Then you can go in and you can have two monthly rewards. You can have two sacreds from your monthly rewards. Go for one every two months and that can take you the stress off. The last thing you want to do is, is over invest and not be able to make it. Um, you know, there's no harm in doing every second one. Look, there we go. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.